Another victory for the Bucknell Bison this past Saturday. Three wins in a row. And joining us on the program is head coach Lou Maranzana. And my name is Bob Beeler. And coach, just a thrilling 32-27 victory over rival Lehigh. And I thought your team played extremely well in almost every phase of the game on Saturday. Yeah, we played real well. A lot of things going on in that game, Bob. You know, the, the rivalry thing with Lehigh, the staying in the league race. And uh, I think biggest thing for us is uh, just continuing to do better. And uh, our players have been playing very hard and playing together and uh, I think are really kind of feeling that improvement and it was a lot of fun. Seems like the attitude is really, as the season has progressed, the team is really focused. I think our attitude throughout the season, even when we struggled early on, was, was outstanding and I, I think the players understood from the beginning that that was the thing that they had going for us, uh, for them and uh, you know, it, that's been the thing that's kept us alive long enough to, to let some of the good players that we've had mm -hmm. kind of come along and make plays and do good things. Let's take a look now at the standings in the Patriot League to see what happens with two weeks to go. Lafayette now a half game in front of both Bucknell and Lehigh. Lafayette and Lehigh will play a week from Saturday. Bucknell will finish the league season against Colgate. All three contenders will have non-league games this week. So a Bucknell win at Colgate, and if Lehigh can beat Lafayette, Bucknell's champs. Yeah, it's going to be a, a, an interesting couple of weeks, a, a week to wait and, uh, and, to, and to do what uh, our next thing is, which is, to, in our case, to play Towson and do a great job against them but uh, then for, uh, for, for the whole thing to unfold. Let's go to the highlights right now from the first half at Christy Matheson Memorial Stadium. Lafayette would move the ball down inside the Bucknell 15, and Cecil Boone would come up with a huge fumble recovery, and this thwarted Lafayette, excuse me, Lehigh's first opportunity. Yeah, they get the ball early, you know, they, they move down the field, uh, take it about 35 yards, and it was a big, big turnover for us. Bucknell does not move the ball in their first possession, and Lehigh comes back flying down the field, and uh, your defense once again up to the task to keep them out of the end zone. Yeah, we do a good job here, and uh, throughout the day, our, you know, our defensive linemen work real hard, and Cecil Boone there make an important uh, play on the counter. Cecil, I think, had a couple of sacks in addition to a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. Russ Strohecker pressuring Simpsonfelter there on second down, and secondary we're going to see a good break on the ball by henry i thought played perhaps their best game this season yeah throughout the day you know they knew that they're going to have to really play their best game and, and really came up and did that so lehigh in the red zone twice on their first two drives no touchdowns and they settle for a career long 36 yard field goal by byron dyson and halfway through the first it's three nothing your running attack goes to work it's been there the last three or four games the the really the the keynote of our improvement of uh, across the board is that we've started to run the ball. It's helped our defense. It's helped our passing game. It's helped everything. We'll see Lemon again on this one. He's going to kind of get shaken up on an ankle injury, but again, what a game for Richie Lemon. He's now closing in on 1,000 yards. He had 165, I believe, in this game, and you were very good all day on third downs, and this is just a great little option play to Barry Dino. Yeah, option play, option reverse there. Uh, Brad kind of intercepting the, uh, the pitch and going back the other way. And how about the touchdown to Brad? And this is just a timing pattern. Uh, Brad does, runs a real good pattern, gets uh, outside the defensive back, and Rob puts it right there. Bison are up 6-3 now towards the end of the first quarter. Simpson Felter being chased by Sean Browser. Cecil Boone finally going to get him by the ankle. And then after an exchange of punts, Lehigh going to try to get a little greedy go for the end zone. Bucknell almost gets a sack here, and really lucky he didn't. We kept him alive, let him throw the ball up the field so we can get this interception. Great hustle by the defensive backs there. John Trailing gets the tip, and uh, we get the ball back. Scott Simptonfelter had trouble all day. What was the key to uh, making him look a little rattled out there? It just our defensive linemen just worked so hard. Uh, I mean, they, they, they wouldn't quit. They, uh, you know, if, if one of them didn't get there, the other was there, and one of them missed him. Another one was kind of uh, like a bunch of barking dogs barking at his ankles throughout the game. I don't think he's had a game where he's felt that much pressure this year, has he? Uh, he's been pressured some of the time. Mm -hmm. He's a good player, and he's, he's really, he's carried them in late, uh, games and gotten some great victories for them, uh, you know, in comeback situations. But uh, the the rush, you're right, it was a big, big factor. Let's pick up highlights a little later on in the first half. Again, Bucknell still leading in the first half. Rob Gluss, a great game, 246 yards, a career high for him. Goes to Rich Lemon out of the backfield. He's made some great decisions and great throws. Yeah, Rob's been playing very steadily, and he, he gets a little better every time he gets an opportunity. And uh, uh, we're very, very pleased with the progress that he's made. We're going to see two looks on this touchdown to Damon Garner, one of the best balls I've seen thrown in a long time. A great catch in front of two defenders. Yeah, we kind of had to there. We. Uh, blew a little something on the action of this play and 
Uh, Damon goes down and runs a good pattern, and Rob throws a, a just a perfect ball over the top. Five catches, 114 yards, and uh, Mark Miller this time is going to look like the wide receiver taking it away from Kevin Rubin. He's got six interceptions, and that leads the lead. You know, they're trying to test Mark there in the, the deep ball, and uh, he gave it back to him. If there was a time when Bucknell could have folded, I thought it was in this sequence here. After the interception on the first play, Glusk rolling out, afraid of the safety, and makes an ill-advised pass. Right, you make a poor decision there. They've got the ball. Uh, they come back, and they got the ball on the, on, right on the three-yard line, but don't get it in for the touchdown and have to settle for the field goal, and that's a big, big fact. Great play on first down to stuff Lookinville on the run, and then they're going to try to throw it in on second and third. Right, here they... They throw a little uh, roll pass, uh, almost exactly the same pass they threw on us uh, a year ago and, uh, you know, aren't able to get it. Good pressure again. Welty and Strohecker chase. A great break on the ball by John Henry. You can just see guys just working their tails off, both on the chase and the breaks back to the ball. And Lehigh would have to settle for another field goal, 20 yards by Dyson. Who cares about those three points, 13 to 6. And, Coach, I thought that may have been a turning point in the game, allowing them not to get in the end zone. I think it reestablished her confidence I was throughout the, the, the game, the defense. I think if you look at it throughout the season, the defense has been put into some tough situations and, and more often than not has kind of stood up and say, hey, we can do this and uh, we can do what it takes to, to win this game. And that's what it took in that situation. And, of course, Rob Gluss, we saw, got shaken up. Travis Kopp came in and let him down for a possible late uh, field goal. So uh, Bucknell really dominated, I thought, the first half. Right. And I think that's an interesting point, just the fact that, that Travis is there to come in when Robbie goes down to, to do some positive things, give us a chance to get some points at the end of the half. One of the biggest reasons the Bison are on a three-game winning streak is the play of the offensive line in the streak. They're averaging 250 yards on the ground and have allowed only one sack in the winning streak. Tom Trainer has the story on the improvement of the line. When people think of the offense, the first thing that comes to mind is the quarterback, the wide receivers, and the tailback. This week on Bucknell Football 93, I'll be taking a look at the other half of the offense, the offensive line. At the beginning of the season, the Bison's offensive line had some very huge gaps to fill with the graduation of all leagues Jeff Hart and Eric Rutter. So, Ed Fratarelli, Don Watson, Gary Petros, Scott Thistlewaite, and Brian Gay stepped in for the challenge to strengthen the line. The workers for the offense is the offensive line. The average offensive lineman for the Bison is around 6'2", 254 pounds. This weight protects the primary players for the offense, the quarterback and the running backs. I asked the players what makes a good lineman. Well, it takes a lot of technique, a lot of concentration. Uh, footwork is definitely a key uh, determination. There's not a, not a lot of glory that goes along with being an offensive lineman. So you have to take pride in the little things. Uh, making a good block and seeing Richie or Craig run for a good uh, gain. Or Rob with throwing a good pass, you know, that, that makes, uh, makes for a good offensive lineman. Uh, I think to be a good offensive lineman, you have to be a little bit crazy going there and uh, go up against some big guys, you know, being six foot, I'm not really tall, and, you know, the, the defensive linemen in Division One are pretty big, you know, so you just got to be a little bit of crazy to get your head down in there and hit them, and, you know. The offensive line this year has had an inconsistent season, but the last two weeks has shown great improvement and their overall potential. In those games against Holy Cross and Fordham, the Bison have rushed for 492 yards and have not allowed a sack. I asked the players why they've been so successful in these two wins. Well, I would say the biggest reason that we've been successful is, has been in our practices, that we've, we've learned what we have to do, and we're coming out on the field and we're doing it, and we're playing aggressively, and we're taking people off the line of scrimmage and performing our jobs as, as expected. Well, we've worked together as an offensive line. Uh, we're coming, finally coming together. Uh, we've gone back to working on the basics the last couple of weeks, stuff that we did during camp that we uh, hadn't done in a while. And uh, now that we also have two backs that are running hard. Uh, I think, well, the two, two good running backs back there and uh, fullback has helped out a lot. And uh, just we've come together well and uh, just getting off the ball good, so. And uh, we're running a lot more than throwing, and that helps get in the screw of things. The catalyst for the Bison's offensive line is Coach Ron Jerbusky, an offensive lineman himself for the Tar Heels of North Carolina, and later a draft pick for the Dallas Cowboys. Coach Jerbusky has provided for the Bison a diehard group of men who will try everything for success. I asked Coach why the Bison have been able to run the ball successfully this year. <laughs> 
I, I told you that right before we started this interview. If I had the answer to that, I'd bottle that, patent it, and make a million dollars. That's a good question. You know, we're we're trying to figure that out ourselves. All of a sudden, you know, we can't do anything, and all of a sudden, bang! You know, uh, we're we're rushing for 235 yards of football game. You know, I think it's a couple of different things. I think, uh, the, you know, uh, the, the five guys are working together a little bit better. They know one another a little bit better. Uh, they've progressed as far as the fundamental techniques so that we're teaching them to, 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 to get better at what we want them to do. In the offensive line, there should be a cohesiveness between players so they can work as a team. This bond has been one of the key factors why the Bison have ran the ball so effectively this season. The Bison's offensive line described to me why there should be this cohesiveness. Oh, I think there's definitely uh, that's a big part of, of the entire team, really, is how the, the people get along and the cohesiveness of the group. I think that's been one of the keys to our success, probably. Uh, the five of us get along real well, and um, we're real friendly off the field and on the field. I think we work well together. When we get to the line of scrimmage, we're able to talk and communicate, and that's a big key. Once uh, the uh, cohesiveness, we get together, we almost can almost tell what the other person's doing or going to do, so that, that makes it a lot easier for us. The Bison's offensive line has shown through hard work and dedication that patience is always a virtue, especially in football. And as for these group of men, the best is yet to come. For Bucknell Football 93, I'm Tom Trainer. Thanks a lot, Tom. And Coach, uh, you show me a good team and I'll show you a good offensive line. It seems like it goes hand in hand together. There's, there's just no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, I think from both sides of our, our football team, you know, we, we feel like it begins up front. And, uh, you know, as our offense has improved, it's really improved at the pace that our offensive line has improved. And those guys have been so steady and worked very hard. Any one thing you can put your finger on? That's, that's made them better down the stretch? I, I just think that uh, if you ask Coach Jabuski, he'll say we've just been doing the same things and had a chance to get better at them. And, uh, you know, I think my feeling is that we've had some individuals who have stepped up the level of their physical play and are playing more confident. And that's just changed the whole chemistry of what's going on with that unit. Again, when we left you on the highlights, the score was 13-6. to six. Bucknell leading by seven. Let's take a look now at third quarter action. And the Bison with a chance really to blow Lehigh out of the tub here with a nice run on the opening play from scrimmage by Richard Lennon. It's just what you want to have happen. We get the ball in the second half and uh, first play. Uh, Rich takes it right down the field in a big run. We're set up good. Craig Spenson, who's coming back from the ankle injury, played sparingly. Nine carries for 36 yards. Nice 10-yard run there. And Craig gets out on the flank, gets around the front of the defense, and uh, now we get kind of bogged down here. Third and goal, Lehigh comes up with the stop on Lemon, and Bison go for the short field goal and a tough break. It's wide left, and that gets me wide right, and Lehigh gets the momentum right back. And after exchange of punts, Lehigh's going to find themselves back in the game. Exactly. Now they're going to come back and do some things themselves and, uh, and put us back in the football game. How about Dave Chikini as a receiver? 13 catches, over 200 yards. He's a tough guy. He's a real opportunistic guy. You know, he makes plays when it's tough. He makes plays when it's not tough. He's a good player. Lehigh didn't run the ball very well, but they did get a nice run out of Lookinville there. And he'll carry over for the touchdown. Extra point will be good. And we've got a football game again in the second half, tied at 13. And we're going to see Brad Bernardini on the next kick for over 1,000 yards all-purpose. He's done it all for you, Coach. Brad's been w working hard, and, uh, you know, besides being a receiver, getting catching punts and kickoffs is, uh, is some pretty tough physical duty, and he's been right up to it. Bucknell had to punt the ball away. David Strickland's going to come up with a big play. He did a very good job with nine tackles in the game. Yeah, th this is Dave's second start. He's kind of starting in place of Dan Zappa there and uh, really improved and played much more actively. Got a lot of production out of your end. Sean Browser here with a sack. And Sean worked hard throughout the day, and, uh, you know, the whole group was really uh, staying after him. They never let up. And Rob Gluss going to find Damon Garner on another play down the sidelines. So He'll get all the way down to the one. Again, over 100 yards in receptions for Damon. Damon was uh, the first one to say that he was the fourth choice receiver on that uh, pattern, and uh, he did a great job there, particularly running away. And here he comes up with the touchdown. His second touchdown of the game, and it's now 20 to 13 in favor of Bucknell in the closing seconds of the third quarter. Charles Crudup's been seeing some time at corner, and with a huge stuff on a third and one. Yeah, the uh, the whole secondary, you got a couple of guys in there. They're sophomores, Crudup and Miller, and uh, they were playing real hard, real well. Bucknell outstanding on third downs. Mike Phillips on a crossing route. Now you have a fourth and one. Rob Gluss on the quarterback sneak, very close. They're going to get the chains out here. And they're going to make it by about the nose of the football. And, Coach, I have to ask you, it's a tough play in the game. 
You're leading by one touchdown. Why'd you go for it there? I just felt that it was important for us at that point and our guys that, uh, you know, that, that we keep moving. And I knew they really wanted to go for it and thought that they can get it. And uh, I had enough kind of confidence that we were playing well, well enough defensively that we could get the ball back. Was there a confidence factor, too, that, that you'd been running the ball well all day? You figured that that would be pretty easy to get? Well, you know, it, it gets down. You're in a tough football game against a team that you really got to beat to keep mm -hmm. uh, keep going where you want to be. And uh, you got to get that much to get a first down, then you got to say, well, we're going to do it. Let's pick up the rest of the drive now. Bucknell, of course, converted that uh, first down. And again, they were four times they converted either third or fourth downs. Mark Gentilly over the middle. They had trouble covering him. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real good, quick decision there by Rob to see uh, Mark right away and get rid of the ball right, right away. Russ on the scramble gets pushed out of bounds at the one-yard line there. And then Steve McHugh with his first of two touchdowns down the goal line. The fullback's pretty tough guys to stop. The uh, fullbacks have been playing better and better for us, and we've been working to try and get him into the running game more, and uh, they're really coming along. Tough break here. Almost kind of looked like a Lucy and Charlie Brown. Looked like the ball wasn't quite set up for Miller, and uh, I thought maybe this was going to be a, a crucial play because now it's 13, and Lehigh was able to uh, get the ball back, and again, your pressure, Simpson felt there was no time. He's going to end up losing the ball. I think that's just a great picture of what was happening to him all day. He's running here and running there, runs away from one guy, and Cecil comes back and smacks some balls on the ground, and we got it. And Russ is telling everybody that Bucknell has the football. Unfortunately, the Bison couldn't cash in on that turnover as Russ would be sacked for the only time during the day. But uh, again, Bucknell's defense is up to the task. Andy Wealthy is going to be the guy to pressure Tim from Felter. I think he's going to get a yard gain, but uh, when you're down two scores, you'll give him the yard. Mm. Well, kind of felt that, uh, you know, with him running around, that we were, we were more worried about him throwing the ball up the field than we were about him running around, although he's a good scrambler, too. They went for it, fourth down and eight on their own 15. Chikini dropped the ball. Bucknell will cash in. And now take a three-score lead, 32 to 13. That, that I, if there is a biggest turning point, I think right there, as they go for it in fourth down, and we're able to come right back and get to 32, that's a big point. Now they are able to score a couple of touchdowns on the run. Simpson Felter puts it up to Chikini in the back end of the end zone. They've got a tough offense. It looks like you guys were playing a little soft there. They're, they're fighting like heck to come back into the game and uh, making some great plays, and, and we're playing conservatively and uh, using the clock as much as we can. Did a nice job on the onside kicks. I think Nofum would end up with it, but I think maybe they touched before it went 10 yards. Uh, we touched it first, which okay. would have made it a live ball, but uh, and we had to fight back, fight to get the ball back out of there. Lehigh would stop Bucknell, and they'd take it in and go down by five, and this was a key play because two-point conversion in there within a field goal of tying the game. Exactly. It's a big play here and uh, good cover by John and running him down on the cage. Of, Real good effort. Now they'll try the onside kick again. What's the key? Do you want them to come up and try to get it? Even yeah, we, we want to make sure that we, we feel the ball. And, you know, uh, we're not going to be indecisive about what we're going to do. We're going to be positive. We're going to try and get a hold of the football and, uh, and make it and end the game. You had a lot of receivers out there, a lot of people who were used to touching the ball. Yeah, well, it's, it's a little different when we don't spend much time hitting ground balls like they do in, uh, in baseball practice. We've been thinking about it now lately. We've, been, we've uh, had a chance to catch a few of those. Most satisfying win of the season? Uh, every win is satisfying for, for me personally. I think for the football team, it's a very big win, a very important win. We enjoyed the heck out of it and uh, gives us a chance to, to, to come rolling into Towson State, who's a real good football team. Bucknell Football 93 will continue after this timeout. We'll be talking with wide receiver Damon Garner and defensive end Sean Browser. But first this. Garner the lone wide out. Gluss will roll to the right side. Looking. Now throwing over the middle. Garner makes the catch in the back of the end zone. This is the Bison Weekend Review. I'm John Terry. Bucknell's men's soccer team came within two minutes and 23 seconds of capturing a Patriot League championship this weekend, but a late Army goal sent the title game into overtime, where the cadets eventually won 4-2. On Saturday, Bucknell beat Colgate in the semifinals 5-4 on penalty kicks. Mark Wrigley, who was named the Patriot League's Player of the Year, stopped two penalty shots to preserve the win. Bucknell's water polo team won a pair of games at the Eastern Championships in Little Rock, Arkansas this weekend to move closer to a bid to the national championships in three weeks. Bucknell defeated Army 10-7. Slippery Rock 9-4 before falling to UMass in the finals 14-7. Bucknell's volleyball team won twice on Saturday to close out the regular season with a 15-11 record, its best mark since 1983. The Bison will take on Navy in the first round of this weekend's Patriot League tournament. For Bucknell Football 93, I'm John Terry.
We're joined by two of the outstanding seniors on this Bucknell football team, defensive end Sean Browser and wide receiver Damon Garner. And Sean, we'll start the questioning with you. You saw a lot of highlights where Mr. Simpsonfelder didn't have much chance to set up. What was the key to the great pass rush? Well, we focused on it all week in practice. Uh, he was averaging over 300 yards a game throwing the ball, and we knew that in order to beat this team, the defensive line would have to really step up. And, and the four guys, whatever four guys were in there, we were trying to get all over them, and uh, I think it really worked. It was one of the few games that we've gotten a tremendous pass rush. It was basically just four. We didn't have to send hardly anybody. We didn't have too many blitzes in the package. Uh, we just dedicated ourselves all week in practice and then got the job done in the game time. Damon, you had a great ball game, five catches for over 100 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Coach, was mentioned a couple of the plays were freelance plays. Uh, something had broken down, and you and Rob somehow were on the same wavelength. Yes, um, it was kind of strange because usually in a lot of plays I'm usually the third or fourth receiver so um, in a lot of opportunities when I see Robin trouble I'm usually the one that's wide open so uh, he took that opportunity to throw to me and I think that I made a pretty good play out of it. Had a lot of good catches but which one do you think was your best? Um, I don't know I like all of them so <laughs> anytime I can get my hand on the ball is it's a smile on my face, basically. Is it different when you're running? We saw some of the long patterns as opposed to when you had the one in the back of the end zone. Is there a difference in trying to work the pattern long, short? I think that it takes a lot more for us to set up the defense. And um, when we're running in long patterns, that gives me more opportunity to use my physical ability. And I like those long patterns a lot better. So what's been the biggest difference down the stretch? We talked a bit about attitude of the team, but this team's made a tremendous turnaround down the stretch. Well, I had an opportunity to address uh, the Bison Club after the we lost to Brown, you know, and I told the told them that we're going to win the Patriot League, uh, and you know, it, it, people got laughed a little bit. You know, you're one and five. The whole uh, difference has been the attitude. Uh, people believe in in Bucknell again. People believe in themselves and their own abilities, and uh, I think that's the most important thing. David, how about Rob Gluss as a quarterback? It looks like he's also developed as the season's gone along. He's just really spread the ball around a lot of different receivers. Yes, I think that um, when Rob was picked to step up, I think that all of us really had that confidence in him. Uh, we know that he has great running ability in the backfield, and that's just an added advantage for us receivers. So, you know, that gives us a little bit more time to get into our patterns. And um, we always have that confidence that he will get us the ball. As we look down the road, you got Towson State, a non-league game. Uh, Sean, what's, what's the feeling coming into this game? I mean, we're not looking past the Colgate, are we? No, definitely not. Uh, this is a big game. Uh, they're a very good team. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but they very well could be ranked this week. Uh, they have a really a good running back, uh, transfer from Purdue. Uh, he's averaging 200 yards a game. We really want to shut him down and, and prove to everyone that Bucknell's for real. What's the difference of going against a predominantly passing team versus a team that, that's probably the number one running team maybe we're going to see all year? Well, against a passing team, you get to throw your ears back more and just fly upfield and, and take a chance on the run. Uh, against the run, you got to really play uh, base defense and, and attack the man in front of you and, and stay on the line of scrimmage. And Damon, I would think this week will be more difficult because I think Towson's defense is better than Lehigh's defense. Yes, they, have a very, they have a very quick defense. It's like going against Hofstra again. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they will do very well because our offense is getting more and more confident and we think that we should be able to move the ball every, every week. You're from the Baltimore area, like friends of yours on this team? Uh, no, I know a couple players just in passing, but um, this is a very good opportunity for me to just go home and meet a lot of my family again. And a lot of people probably trying to hit you up for those free tickets, right? They're trying to, <laughs> phone probably hasn't stopped ringing all week. Yeah, I'm trying to get 30 tickets now. So. <laughs> <laughs> you can say, no, sorry. sorry. I'm a big timer now. I catch two touchdowns again. Well, Dana, I want to thank you for joining us on the show. Thank Best you. of luck against the Tigers. And Sean, a great game as well against Lehigh this past week. Our guests, Sean Browser and Damon Garner, Coach Lou Maranzana returns. We'll talk about those Tigers after this timeout. Since 1846, scholars have come together at Bucknell to ask questions and explore answers. Inspired by the fresh spirit of the newest students and the seasoned wisdom of the faculty, this meeting of minds fosters achievement. Bucknell professors enjoy national reputation, and Bucknell students are known for their intelligence. Their lively exchanges extend from classrooms and seminars to informal meetings in faculty offices and the campus snack bar. 
Bucknell is a comfortable place for the tradition of the classics and the demands of today's society. The arts, humanities, and sciences thrive alongside professional programs in engineering, education, management, and music. The environment for this growing diversity and the ongoing meeting of minds is a very beautiful campus in central Pennsylvania. Bucknell's stately buildings and beautiful trees and gardens provide an ideal collegiate setting. Bucknell, with 3,300 undergraduates and over 260 faculty members who sustain the spirit that is this university and who carry it with them throughout their lives. At Bucknell, the balance between academics and athletics is accomplished as well as it is any place in the country. In fact, recent NCAA statistics show that for the second consecutive year, the Bison led the country in the graduation rate of their student-athletes. Many factors contribute winning streak to Towson on Saturday. Towson 6-2, and two, fresh off a huge win at Delaware. Maybe the best team we'll face all year. They're a real good football team. They've got it across the board. You know, great offense, super running back, uh, very mature, big lineman. Uh, you know, defense that's done whatever it took. Uh, you know, they don't have a lot of weaknesses, but uh, for us, it's just another opportunity to play. And, you know, we feel like uh, we can... We can do something with the ball, and uh, we're going to work our tails off on defense. Well, Coach, we look forward to looking at the highlights next week. Uh, we've won three in a row. I don't see why we can't make it four in a row this week against the Tigers. That's the idea. Thanks, Bob. Head Coach Lou Maranzana on the show here. Again, we want to thank you for watching Bucknell Football 93. We'll take a look at those highlights from down in Baltimore next week, same time, same station. For everyone here, this is Bob Beeler. Thanks for watching.